Are you having problems with a Singer Simple? Hello, I'm Richard Caldwell with Sewing Machine Tips and Tricks, and today we're going to service a Singer Simple. There are two different types of Singer Simples. One of them, the first, the original, is the front load bobbin, and that's what we're going to be servicing today. The other one is a top load bobbin. These are two totally different machines. Um, this this uh, video is on the front load. Um, this video is on the front load uh, bobbin for the Singer Simple. So if you have a top load, this video really isn't going to apply. Um, <clears throat> so far as taking it apart and servicing and all that, it's going to be a di it's going to be different. Um, you can kind of follow along and look. Not everything is going to be the same, such as this one does not have a timing belt, and the top load bobbin does have a timing belt. Um, it's shaped differently. It comes apart differently. There's a lot of differences. When it comes to the way that it makes a stitch, it still makes a stitch the same way. But there are differences in the machine that are not going to apply to this one. Okay? So or this one's not gonna to apply to the top load bobbin. Um, but if you have a front load bobbin, Singer Simple, then this is a video for you. Um, and we are going to uh, get it serviced and show you how to do this. So do you have a front load, uh, front load bobbin, Singer Simple, or do you have a top load? Let me know, let me know in the comments what you got. Um, if you have a top load, let me know if you'd like me to do a video on it. Um, if I get enough people looking for it, then I will see about finding a top load and getting it done. Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and get started and, uh, get the show on the road. All right. Um, here it is. And I'm actually going to run a little bit, let you hear it, let you hear what it sounds like. Um, it really doesn't sound that great and this is actually kind of common for these machines and then after it starts doing this it'll actually start locking up and I'm going to show you why it does that and I'm going to show you why it locks up when we get inside this machine it's very common for these machines okay um, so here we go here's what it sounds like well I guess it's got to be on first It really sounds bad. It sounds horrible. So, with that, let's uh, let's get started on this. Okay. Whew, stinks. I smell the motor. The, and the reason I smell that motor is because it's stressing. The motor is uh, overworking. And so, that is, uh, again, that's a common thing with these. And you can burn that motor out um, if you continue to run it like that. Anyway, these things are really super simple, thus the name. So first we want to remove the little box on it, all right? Um, now, we're going to take all these three knobs off. Uh, we'll take the presser foot, the needle, and the foot off of it. And then we have this screw. We have... Um, Two screws up here. We have this screw. And we have two screws up here. We have this screw down here that has to come out. A screw in the end. Then we have one screw here. And uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, so one foot. Not not all the feet, just one foot. Now this this one here may pop off, so be careful. Don't lose it. It should be glued on, but you never know. Um, and we're, we'll take, we'll start down here, get this off, and then move up. All right, so here we go. All right, so first thing is we're going to 
pull these knobs off so that they're not in our way. You just grab it and pull it off just like that. It can be on there kind of tight. Okay, and then you're gonna pull that one off. Um, on these, notice, Let me see if I can go this way. Notice that one side is longer than the other. I want you to notice that one side is open, one side is closed. The longer side goes through the open end. Real simple. And it's the same on this. It just pulls off should just pull off um, if it doesn't you can help us a little bit get a I don't really don't like we're using screwdrivers on this I use a thin pry bar because it works better for me but even with this you got to be careful um, and I may have to use a screwdriver because this one doesn't want to come off <laughs> you want to be careful here because you'll ding up this plastic quick. And this sucker does not want to let go. You you experience this sometimes where it doesn't want to let go. And it makes you wonder if it's even supposed to come off this this way, but it is. It is. And we'll get two of them. Try to get two of them going here. There we go. So if it's not coming off with one, you saw how I just used two screwdrivers and I popped it off. You, you want to be careful because you can tear this up. You can put dents in. In fact, I put a little bit of a mark on it right there. I'll have to clean that off. Okay. And as well, you can uh, tear this up as well. So you want to be real careful when you're doing that. Because it don't take much to break this plastic. It'll break real easy. Um, the reason for two screwdrivers, one on each side, whether it's top and bottom or left and right, whatever works better for you. But it puts an even amount of pressure so that it's not uh, not putting the piece of plastic in a, in, in a bad position. It's not pinching anything or anything. It's pulling it straight off. Oil and stuff gets in here sometimes and it kind of locks it up. So... If you get something in there that's holding it and then you're prying at it at an angle, uh, that's a recipe for disaster. You can definitely break it. So you want to be real careful with that. You know, this, this plastic, again, it's just, it'll break easy. So you want to be really careful with it. All right, so we got that. Let's go ahead and take the bottom off. Okay, so I'm going to... Um, Take this off first. Make sure that you have something to put your screws in. And um, not so much on this one, but some of the machines you gotta really pay attention to where the screws come from. Um, if you happen to have a longer screw, make sure that you make a mental note of that or you mark it or something so that you don't forget where it came from because that could be uh, detrimental to getting it back together properly and getting it working properly. Uh, pull that out of your way, sorry. My table is not the best right now. I gotta get another one. <laughs> All right, and then just, this doesn't really wanna come off, but oh, I forgot. Yeah, this one pops off. All right, so that one will have to come off. Don't lose it. Okay, now, I believe, I don't think we have to take this off, but we're gonna find out. I can't remember now <laughs> for sure, but I think that we don't. On some machines you do. Nope, we don't, so we're good. All right. Um, all right, now we're gonna take the needle plate off. Uh, find a... Uh, screwdriver for that this one worked fine and actually before I do that I'm going to take the needle out maybe um 
This is crazy. Don't do that. Don't freaking tighten your needle up that tight. You'll strip this. You'll cause yourself all kinds of problems. This is nuts. It, it's got to be tight, but you don't have to freaking kill it. You know, you're going to cause yourself, yourself more problems than necessary. Dang. I even unloosened it some. This is insane. That was pretty close to being stripped, I think. Yeah, don't do that. Don't tighten it up that tight. That's that's crazy. Come on. Make sure my head's not in the way. I have a bad habit of putting my head in the way. Okay. All right, so now we'll go ahead and take this end off real quick actually first because it'll make it easier to get that plate off. <laughs> Okay, real quick here, this has got to come out too, and I want to show you because some people don't know. Okay, on these front load bobbins, your hook will come out. So I'm wanting to see if I can show you how this works. Hopefully how it works, how it uh, comes apart, goes together, so on and so forth. All right, so you have two black levers right here. Okay, so uh, you want to make sure that your needle's up. Um, because you don't, because the needle will come down and get in your way. All right. First of all, let's uh, pull the bobbin case out, and uh, all right, get that out of the way. And if there's a bobbin in there, make sure it's out. Now you're going to take each one of these little levers <clears throat> and you're going to turn it. So the one on the left goes to the left, one on the right goes to the right, and then grab the center of this hook and just pull it out, just like that. That's two pieces. Okay, you've got the hook up, you've got the hook, get some light over here on the subject, you've got the hook, right, this is the actual hook, this is the point of the hook, and it's sharp, it is as sharp as a needle, and it will slice your fingers open, so be careful with it, okay, and then this is a little retainer that holds the hook in, all right, when you go to replace it, it's fairly simple. You see how that sits there? This, you just turn it so that it fits together. And we're going to do this again when, uh, when we put it back together. Okay, it sits in there flush. Just slides right in. This goes in over the top. Now, let me show you something. I should have done this a while ago. It's got that little tab right there. Okay, that goes directly on the bottom, this one right here. It goes directly on the bottom. It's got a little opening right there, right? It's got a little opening right here, okay? So it lines up and uh, just goes right together. It should fall right in real easy. If it doesn't, then you have a problem, okay? Once that's done, that'll just pop over and that'll pop over and you're done. It's ready to go, then you put your bobbin back in. Now, let's get it out of here. All right, so we got that apart. Let's uh, zoom out again, <laughs> like so. And let's get this machine taken apart. Okay, we're gonna pull the rest of the screws out of this. All right, so we'll do these two screws up here, and these are plastic screws. You wanna remember that. Okay, the, these, they look like a wood screw or something. They don't have fine threads. They have real coarse threads. All right, most machines that, not all, but most, 
uh, the screws up here will be plastic screws, um, especially with singers, right? See? So you, you want to remember that. You want to remember where those go because most of the rest of them are not like this. Most of the rest of them are metal screws, all right? So I think this one's a metal screw too. This one down here, yeah, it is. I can feel it. Okay, so it's very important to make sure that you get the metal screws in the right holes and the plastic screws in the right holes. The only two plastic ones is these two right here, I believe. Um, okay, so we got that apart, right? And that's a metal screw, as you can see. All right, so now I'm just going to double check, make sure... Yeah, I have forgot something. You've got some screws right here on the front. Number one, um, well this, let's see, yeah, this one's fine, no big deal there. But you have two screws. You have one right here and one right here, okay? They need, they don't have to come out, but they have to be loosened. Just like that. <laughs> right? Okay. Then, I put the foot down, and I just start pulling it apart. See, I pull this apart, and on these thing are simples, it could, should come easy. Did you see how I put my thumb here, and I pushed? I had pressure on this, I pushed on this, and the thing just falls apart, okay? On these Singer Simples, it's real simple. It works like that real easy. Now, I've only got a couple more places that are holding it, and that's back here on the back. And I'm going to do the same thing. See that? Okay. Now, the only other thing that's holding it is right here. Okay. So we've got to take that and pop that over. Just like that. And the back's off. Now, we have another screw. 99.9% .9 of singers have this screw. Okay. And it's hard to find. See this hole? See that hole right there? There's a screw in there on this other side that screws this plastic. And that's actually another plastic screw. Um, let's see if we can zoom in there and get this. There it is. There is that screw. Right now, yeah. Right there. That screw right there. Okay, it's a Phillips head screw and it has to come out. If you try to pull this apart without taking that out, you're going to break the you're going to break the plastic, okay? It's hard to find, but it's there. Um, so you want to get a screwdriver and this one is almost too short, okay? So my screwdriver that thing is almost oh, that's uh that screwdriver is almost too short, okay? So, get in here. All right, now, this should just come right off, just like that. From the bottom, let me let me turn this around so you can see how I did it. Getting it back on can be a little more difficult. All right. All right, so now there's nothing holding this. The only thing it does hold is these. You just grab this, you flip it out, up and off, right? Voila, we're done. All right, <clears throat> so. At this point, if you have any lint and stuff, you want to get it out of there, use some canned air, use use an air hose if you have one, use a brush, use whatever, get it out of there. I don't have any in here. I It looks doesn't look like it's been used a whole lot, or if it has, they've done a really good job of cleaning it, which is good on them, but um, it does have some issues. Not major issues, but it has issues. Um, <clears throat> anyway, get all that cleaned up, get any, if it has dried oil and stuff on it, clean that off, get that off so that, that that's not an issue. Um, once you've done that, then you're going to lubricate it, all right? Um, I'm going to start with the motor on this. See the motor? 
These type motors, these big motors, they have uh, little felts on either end where the shaft goes through. I've got some other videos where I, real, where I show how to lubricate that real well. You want to get those felts in there. Do not drench the motor. Do not drench the motor. Do not drench the motor. It's better to have a little bit less oil than too much. Um, too much oil. And you can um, uh, burn your motor up. You can cause a fire. You can cause a lot of stuff. So be real careful with that. You want to get the, get the felts good and wet. You can use a flashlight okay, to see the felts. It's kind of, there's a metal piece right here that's holding the felt. That's a metal piece, and down in there is the felt. You can kind of see the top of it, okay? Um, you want to oil that. You want, you want to get the felt itself pretty soaked. You don't want it so soaked that it's getting oil all over the place, okay? Does that make sense? Um, again, it's better to use a little bit less than a little bit more in this situation because you don't want the inside of that motor saturated in oil. Okay, so if you're not sure, then put like five to 10 drops in it, and then that would be it. Yeah, and I can tell that this one was really dry on this end. All right, once that's done, okay, now let's go over, um, let's go over this. I told you I was going to show you what uh, caused problems with this machine, and it's right here. This piece right here. This got some dissimilar metals in here between this and the piece inside there. And uh, it will, uh, it, it starts freezing up, okay? There's just the way it's made. It's not, it doesn't, you, you see the little hole here? That's a lubrication hole, but there's no hole in the plastic. And so it never gets lubricated. And so it starts freezing up, right? This one doesn't feel horribly bad, but it definitely doesn't feel good. Um, if you had a way of, I'll put it differently, you could take and put a small hole in the plastic up above it so that you could uh, oil this and that would probably really help you. The uh, Alternatively, you could pull the back of it off every uh, once a week, once every two weeks, whatever, depending on how much you use it and then drop some oil in there and that that will oiling this will preserve the life of this by a long way um if this something else you can do and it's uh it, i'm not going to do it today i'm definitely not going to do it today it takes a lot of work is you can undo this screw and um move this out of the way and let's see you have to you undo that screw you're going to have to undo these screws here now the problem with this okay you need to you need to mark this so that you know exactly where it's setting because this has to get set right back this has to do with your feed dogs okay if you're not real sure about this don't do it i warn you right now don't do it unless you are real comfortable with mechanics. But what you can do, if you're comfortable with this, undo, mark this, undo this set screw, move this over, there's another screw in there, you're gonna move that, you're gonna take that off, and then you're going to move this over, clean the inside of this and the outside of that lobe up, and put a thin layer of really, high quality grease like a tri-flow or something, 
put it back together, then put a little bit of oil in there so it'll mix so that uh, it's not too thick and that will really make it go a lot longer, okay? Um, that being said, personally, I would recommend uh, either putting a small hole in the plastic or every couple of weeks pulling the back off this and putting some oil in this, all right? That is my recommendation. So, um, but this is the problem. This is the main problem with these machines, yet locking up. Uh, when it starts getting tight and this is this is no longer real smooth and it's like feeling catchy and stuff, then this is your problem. This is the main problem because it hadn't been lubricated. Okay, so and a lot of times, I don't know if this one's going to or not, we will see. A lot of times, you get some lubricant in this, you turn it a few times and you put some more lubricant especially when it's uh, <clears throat> really, really having problems and you'll get some black gunk out of there. And you need to keep doing that. You need to keep oiling it and doing that until that black gunk, gunk quits coming out. Um, I may not get any out of this one. It doesn't feel real, real bad. So, yeah, so I plugged it in. I've got everything apart. Just make sure your hands are out of the way. I'm going to run it. Well, before I do that, I'm going to get some oil in some other places. Well, I'm putting the oil on the ends where the shaft goes through the bushings, okay? That's what I'm doing right now. That's what you want to do. I'm putting a little oil where the grease is to uh, revitalize that grease. Okay, and then... Put a little bit on the needle bar. <laughs> All right, top, bottom, and top of the needle bar, just like every other machine. And then your linkage from your take up lever to your needle bar, everything that moves on that, you want to get that real good, whether it's plastic on plastic, plastic on metal, or metal on metal, it doesn't matter. You want to get good lubrication on each one of those, several drops on each one. Okay, and then make sure where that linkage hooks to your needle bar on the back, for sure. That's the most important one when it comes to that linkage. <laughs> and then turn it. Okay, I'm going to turn this over. And we're going to do the same thing here, all right? First thing we're going to do is get the shaft where it goes through the bushings on each end of the frame. Just like that. Then this little lobe right here, get a little lubrication on that. <clears throat> you can put some grease on it or oil, either way. That one's not a big deal. Um, just as long as it has some sort of lubricant. Just like that. And this probably isn't a big deal, but I like to lubricate everything. This one is a big deal right here. This one right here. This one is most definitely a big deal. Make sure you get it. Okay. Basically anything that has movement, anything that touches, anything that rubs needs lubrication. Anything that can cause friction needs lubrication, okay? Now, just make dang sure. All right, so the main, the main points to get are the four bushings on each shaft. Actually, there's six bushings. There's three shafts because this shaft right here is for your feed dog. So you got a bushing here, a bushing here, a bushing here, a bushing here, and then up top, those two bushings, and then that lobe up top. Make sure you get that. And, and of course, right here, this goes up to where that lobe is. Okay, make sure you get this. Those are all the main important areas to get. Um, put a little bit of lubricant on your gear here. You can put a little oil on it or a little grease, either way, whatever. Don't, don't put a ton of grease in that, all right? Do not, do not put tons of grease. If you put any grease on it, just a light layer. That's all you want. You'll cause yourself a lot of unwanted problems. All right, now, I'm gonna run this. Now that I've got all that lubricated. 
let's see. That's really kind of slow, but it's speeding up. I think you can hear it. So we've got lubricant in there. Okay, I'm gonna, let's see. See, I'm gonna <clears throat> do this and see if you can see this, if it happens, okay? I hope it does a little bit anyway, just so y'all can see it. All right. Well, no, didn't really get anything. Usually you'll get a ton of black crap out of that. But there were areas that were dry. You heard it um, speeding up as, as it was going after I put the lubricant on it. And if you're wondering what I use, I use triflow. I use triflow oil, triflow grease, and that's what I recommend. It's not a sewing machine oil, but it's a much higher quality oil and has uh, PTFE, PFT. Whatever it is, Teflon. It has Teflon in it, and uh, it it does an amazing job with machines. Okay, let's see. So there's a little bit coming out. I don't know that you can really you really saw that. It was a little bit of discolorization that came out of it. But and when it's really bad, you get a lot of black crap out of that. You notice I'm continuing to do this, right? Several times here. I want to make sure that this is lubricated well. If you're getting black crap out of it, you want to keep doing this till that black crap goes away and it's coming out clear, at least 99.9% .9 clear. Um, you want it well lubricated and you want all that stuff out of it. Otherwise, it's going to lock right back up on you in a few days. All right? Anytime you're servicing a machine, Whatever is causing it to lock up, you've got to get out, okay? You have dried oil on older machines. You have dried oil and gunk and gum and stuff on it. you got to get that out. You can't just put a little bit of oil and a little bit of heat on it, and then, yeah, we're okay because a few, few days, few weeks, depending on how much you put on it, maybe a month or so, and it'll lock back up, all right? That's got to come out. you got to keep putting enough, adding lubricant and running it until it all comes out. All right, I hope that's making sense. This one's looking good. When it comes to these bushings and stuff, you can't get too much oil. Now, you don't want to douse it and get it all over the belt. You want don't want it up in the motor, and you don't want it on the elect electrical or any electronic components, all right? But so far as where it needs to be, um, in this part, in the bushings, whatever, you can't get too much. You just add a little bit at a time and keep adding it until you're comfortable that it's in there good. And I'm just tipping this up now so that, to make sure that it gets into that bushing real well. Um, Maybe you can see what I'm doing there. Okay, now we want to be real careful because we got the hand wheel right here. Um, got the hand wheel right here with the belt and stuff, and I don't want to get that belt just doused in oil. So, okay, now what I'm going to do now is. Um, The scam and all the little gears and stuff, everything that has any rotation or movement, I'm going to put just a little bit of lubricant on it just to make sure it stays uh, lubricated. Okay, um, that's not a huge thing, but I do recommend it. It helps. It's going to help in the long run.
right inside here. This one is kind of important. Um, this is your reverse lever. It's your, it's the stitch length and reverse. Let's see if I can get some light on that. Okay. There's grease in there. You don't have to pull the grease out as long as it's not a lithium grease and hopefully nobody puts lithium grease in those things. Lithium grease is gonna be like a heavy white or something or cream colored grease usually. Make sure that's uh, well lubricated so that it doesn't freeze up on you. That's your, like I say, it's your, your reverse lever. You can see that this is the reverse lever and you can see it move in there. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> So, I mean, this thing is quick and simple and easy. That right there is like 99% of what's going on. Put some, this is, this is an important part right here. Put some lubricant right here on this bar. This is where your, uh, when you're changing your stitches, this is what actually changes, causes it to change stitches. Uh, it it uh, moves with the cam. And this needs to move, okay? So it moves up and down across this bar. Make sure that that's lubricated. And uh, then we're gonna take the bar, or we're going to, I'm gonna take the knob and put back on this. We're gonna turn it. I think you can see that. Okay, a little bit of grease on here. This already has some grease on it, so I'm just gonna use what's there, because it doesn't take a lot. Put a little bit of lubricant right here on these teeth. It doesn't take a lot. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can zoom in so you can get a little better shot of it. Of it moving, put some light on it. Light on the subject. See if I can hold this in a manner so that you can see it. Okay, you see that moving? That piece right there where my thumb is. That's why that's the piece that actually causes you to get different stitches. You want to make sure it has full movement and that it's properly moving. Okay, this piece right here is what pushes it. You notice that it's stepped, right? You notice that this piece is stepped, right? And when you're looking inside it, I don't know if I can get it up to you, that, that right there. This right here, this actually pushes against these steps and these steps push it out, moving it, all right? So make sure that you have really good movement in all of this, that everything moves properly. Uh, be careful with it. Don't, if it's stuck, don't get crazy with it. Put lubricant on it, kind of move it, move it around a little bit. Um, be careful with it, be careful with it, be careful with it. If you break this part, you're done, all right? Um, if it's stuck, and <clears throat> if it is stuck, if it's got a bunch of crap on it, as it, it'll start moving a little bit, but it'll start sticking. You just got to keep adding, adding lubricant on it. Um, just keep putting oil on it and moving it and moving it until it moves freely. Like, let me see if I can do this. Let me uh, I'll turn that so that it's partially turned. See how this moves? See that? I, I've, I've turned it enough so that it, it lifts. Okay, when you start turning the lever, it lifts, so that lifts off the off the cam, so it'll move. All right, do you see that? Do you see how that moves? That's how it should move. If it's sticking down here like this or whatever, or if it's moving slow, then that's no bueno. It's no good, it should do just like that. All right, um, so you wanna keep lubricating it until it moves properly. 
that's not the that's not the main thing on this machine, but it could be an issue. So, um, all right. Let me know if y'all have any questions. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, if you have any problems. Um, if you have something weird that you haven't seen or I haven't covered, let me know. Put it in the comments and I'll try to help you with it. Um, anyway, at this point, that's uh, pretty much done. And then we just put it back together. Um, I'm going to drop a little bit of oil right back here on the feed dogs. You don't necessarily have to do this, um, but you can. So, all right. <laughs> and it's good to go. And we'll put it back together now. And it goes back together the same way that it came apart. So you're going to put this on. Just like it was. Make sure that it's properly fitting on there. That it's not bouncing. If it bounces, then you've got a problem. Usually it's like right here. You need to make sure that you got that figured out. Maybe this is catching on that screw or whatever. Okay, we're going to turn around. We're going to get that screw and get it put back in. The magnet on my screwdriver is dead. Okay, now this can be difficult. This is where you're really going to need a screwdriver with a good magnet is getting this in there without it continuing to fall through the machine. If you need to, you can lay the machine on its front when you're trying to do this. Now, I'm experiencing a problem where my magnet's in my way of turning my screwdriver. So, yeah, that ain't going to work. All right, try that again. There we go. <laughs> okay, so once you get that, turn it around, <clears throat> tighten this screw right here. This is going to make sure that it doesn't come apart and you don't catch it on something and break it or something. Okay. Oh, almost forgot put a little bit of this isn't huge but you want to put a little bit of oil right there on that okay and right down here this is where the both of those is where your swing is so it's not a huge deal but um on the it's not a huge deal on this machine on some it is on this one it's not and then this just slaps back onto it just goes right back on Move this out a little bit so hopefully you can see it. Okay, so you just, just gotta kind of play with it till it goes back together. Now, this is gonna go mostly together. This is where you gotta be careful, make sure that everything looks good, everything's lined up. And then it's gonna start popping together. All right, you wanna make sure it all looks good as you're doing this. Like this right here isn't lining up right. There we go. Okay. Be careful doing that. All right. Because if something's not properly lined up and you get too crazy with that, you can break it. All right. That's, uh, those, that's just the little clips in there popping together. But you got to make sure before you pop it together that everything's good. If it's like continually not going, it's because something's not lining up. Be careful with that. Be careful with that. Because you will break it. <laughs> Again, these plastic pieces break easily. Okay, now I've got it together. I'm just gonna look at it here, make sure. Okay, so now see, I'm not quite lined up right here. See if you can see that. That's not really lined up real well. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of pull this up and it's gonna go together. There it is. Now we're good. Now we're lined up. Okay, so you wanna inspect it before you get too far and make sure everything is good. Okay.
Now, um, let's put all the screws in this back in it. So we will start with the two uh, the two plastic screws top. One here. And this is just going to help make sure that it doesn't come apart. One here. Okay. And then we got two metal screws. I just poured all my stuff into a lid and I'm putting moving everything back that uh, I don't need right now. So okay, so we got these two metal screws right here. Get them put back in there. And they just screw back in. That. Okay, so that's that. Now we'll do the, bo the bottom. <clears throat> Make sure that this is clean. Okay, if this got a little bit of thread on it, we'll get rid of that. Make sure that all this is clean. Make sure that all these, all your parts and stuff are cleaned out because you don't want that going back in your machine. If you've got lint and stuff or grease, anything nasty, wipe it out, clean it out because you don't want that getting back in your machine. That's the whole reason of doing this is to get that crap out, right? So just because it's on the plastic doesn't mean, okay, well, we're good. You need to get it out. All right, now I'm going to open that up. I'm going to put this back on there and close it. Then this is a metal screw. Get that. Get it back in. Just like that. And then we got the bottom. Inspect it. Make sure it's pretty clean. It's not bad. I'll... Wipe it off. Okay, put this back on. Make sure you get it on here correctly. Okay, all right. And then these are all metal screws. Just like that. That particular one is a bigger headed screw. Okay, I didn't show you that. The one that goes inside of this is a bigger headed screw. I guess I should turn this around so you can see it too. All right, and move it over here. Get all right. So I got that screw, which is a larger headed one than this one. And we'll do these two bottom ones. Maybe. Be careful if uh, it prematurely tightens up. That means that you've got it cross-threaded and you need to take it out and get it uncross-threaded. If, if you uh, cross-thread this and you force it, you're gonna tear up the threads and the aluminum in the frame, okay? Uh, you won't tear up the threads on the screw because it's a, it's a, a uh, steel alloy screw but that aluminum frame, you'll tear it up and then you're gonna be up the creek. So, make sure you don't do that. Then you gotta get your little rubber foot, put it on, make sure that you don't lose that. Make sure you get it on, otherwise you're gonna have a problem in getting your machine balanced. All right, now we can what you want to do at this point, you want to do some inspecting. Okay, you want to, we're going to put all this together real quick. The needle, needle plate and stuff. Inspect this opening right here. Inspect this all around here. If you have any, if this is tore up, all right, and this goes for any machine. 
If this needle plate's tore up, if the needles hit it and stuff, you need to clean that out. Mine looks good, but I will show you right now how to clean it. You can use a Dremel tool or you can use a drill. I'm using, I've got a drill. I used to have a Dremel. It disappeared. Anyway, see that cone bit? This is a, uh, this is a diamond type cone bit for a Dremel tool is what it's for. And it works great. You just put it in there, turn it on, put it in there. And you don't want it to sit in one spot. You want to be careful and move it back and forth both sides like that. While it's going, I'm not going to do it because this is good until that's cleaned up until all the marks are gone out of it. All right. And then it's good. And then you can put it back on as well. A lot of times these hooks will get damaged. Uh, the end will, this one's really good. This one's in great shape. The end will get blunted on it. Um, you'll get scratches here. You'll get scratches in here. Um, your thread goes around this. All right. Completely around this. Your thread goes completely around this. One more time. Your thread goes completely around this. So if there's anything that your thread can get hung up on, it's going to, and it's going to cause you freaking horrible problems. All right? It'll make you mad. It'll drive you insane, and you won't know what's going on. Damage on this can drive you absolutely batty, and you won't understand what's going on. Use some sandpaper. In fact, you know what? This one does have some, this one has some damage. Not much. Very, very little. Let me see if I can get it in and s help you see that. Okay. This is just minor, minor, minor damage. I'm going to clean it up. It probably won't cause me any problems. But I'm going to clean it up anyway. You can see some right here too. A little bit. Just tiny, tiny. Okay, where the needles just barely hit it. This isn't nothing. I've seen them horrible. Um, if it's extremely deep, then you can use that drill or dremel. And you don't want to sit in one spot, most definitely on this. If you get, if, if, if you create grooves in this, it's no good anymore. You can use it and just kind of go over it like that. If, if, if it's deep, if it's not deep, if it looks like this, don't do that. Um, but if you've got really deep gouges in this, you can use a Dremel or the drill or whatever and just go over it. You're trying to smooth it out as much as possible. Once that's done, then you're going to use some sandpaper. Um, 800 grit is a great, 800 or 1,000 is great sandpaper. I'm fixing to get some 800 grit and show you how to do it. If you like this video, if you find it uh, helpful, then please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this with a friend. Share this with someone who could get use out of it as well. Um, I'd appreciate that very much. And um, leave me a comment if you would. Let me know. All right, y'all have a great day. All right, so I want you to see it is 800 grit, P800, all right? Move this out of the way. And you can do this one of two ways. You can either hold it like this. Let's uh, zoom this out. You can do it like this, okay? Or you can put the sandpaper on the table like this. And then move it back and forth. Just like this, okay? You're just trying to clean it up, get all the get all the grooves and stuff off of it, get all the marks off of it. You want this thing as smooth as possible because that thread goes around this really quick. And if there's any issues at all <coughs> with that thread catching it, it will. And it'll loop on you. It'll it'll cause you all kinds of problems. Okay. Okay. All right. So this wasn't bad to begin with. Now it's looking even better. Right? So it looks good. We're going to put it back together. All right. Then we can put the end back on it. All right. Now that we've got that on, got the plate on, now we can put the end on it. Um, by the way, this piece right here. This is for the pressure on your presser foot. So, and let's go over that real quick. If you're, um, 
If you're sewing really light stuff, silk, whatever. If you're sewing light stuff, silk, uh, anything real light where the feed dogs are apt to tear it up, then you want to take this up and take the pressure off the fabric. If you're sewing something thicker, several layers of cotton, denim, whatever, uh, you want to turn this down and put more pressure on it. All right. Um, if you have any questions on what I just said, let me know. Let me know. Okay. Then we're going to put this back on. Like so. Maybe it's got to fit on there just right. Sometimes they're a little difficult. That's not sitting on there right. <clears throat> okay, so you've got this piece and you've got this piece. This right here goes in this hole. This right here, this goes in it. And so that's the problem, just trying to line them up. All right, so. It ain't no big deal, you just got to keep playing with it until it happens. There it is. Right there. And then put your screw in it. Right there, then we can put our foot back on. Now, there's an issue. What's the issue? Okay, so this one, there's an issue with the bobbin for some reason. Looks like it's got some crud in there. Okay, so it felt really good until I put it back together and then it's not feeling good anymore. I take the bobbin case, the, 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 I call it the bobbin, the hook, out, and all of a sudden it feels good. Okay, so it felt kind of weird in there. Um, you see this? You see that piece of lint? right there really really tiny and it's about the same color as that metal so it's really it was really hard to see that was in there that was in behind where the hook set and so every time i put pressure i, I put that together and it had pressure pushing back on that hook it was getting caught it was pushing on that and it wasn't pushing it out it was just staying there so it was causing uh friction and causing a problem okay when you clean your machines and you inspect them, do a really good job at it. As you're putting it back together, keep turning it, keep testing it, keep checking it. And at the point where something doesn't feel right, that's your problem, okay? You put part of it together and now it doesn't feel right and while ago it did, take that part back apart Okay, now it feels good. Okay, there, right in that area is your problem. Start figuring, start looking for that problem. Find that problem. That little bitty piece right there. Let me uh, zoom out. Okay, do you see that? And so when it's on a piece of metal, it's got dirt and stuff on it now. It's harder to see. See how it's really hard to see on this piece of metal? And on this down here, it was really hard, especially stuck right in the corner. You've got to really inspect it. You've got to look close, okay? That was a problem. That was a huge problem. And it would have continued, all right? Now, we got that taken care of. It doesn't take much to mess these machines up. Something tiny that looks irrelevant to you, but in actuality, it's not irrelevant at all. And it can be a huge, huge problem. So I hope I'm hope I'm being pretty clear on that and you understand what I'm saying. Okay, now we can get the rest of this put back together, 
put the foot back on it. Get these uh, knobs back on here. Make sure you get them on correctly, like I was telling you, okay? With the long side going through the opening. All right, so then once you have it threaded, everything's good. Uh, then you want to pull your uh, um, bobbin thread up. If you go to turn the hand wheel and it goes so far and it won't turn and like stops right here, let me like see how this stops. If you have this happen, check your uh, check your uh, bobbin winder, make sure it's not engaged. Okay because that will do just that. And then, all right, pull your bobbin thread up, just like that, and we're good to go. Let's uh, plug it in. See what we got. All right, so I wanna check my stitches. First of all, I wanna check to make sure that I'm on a straight stitch after I put a machine back together I always want to do a straight stitch first so we're going to do a straight stitch put your length stitch length probably on about between two and three put your tension on three or four as a matter of fact if you look there you see the line that goes uh, that goes between the numbers from three to five, okay, that, that's your, on this machine, that's your normal tension. So we'll put it on four, right in the center. Um, stitch width, we want it zero because we want to do a straight stitch, not a zigzag, okay? So, <clears throat> let's see, I got this material here. Whoop. <clears throat> Got this material right here it's not real heavy um, but it's not real light neither so we're gonna see what that'll do anytime I'm testing the machine after I put it back together um, I'm gonna turn it by hand a little bit okay because if there's any problems I'm gonna find them right now when I'm turning it by hand not when I'm trying to sew at 100 miles a minute 100 miles a minute so this is where I want to find the problems because if I have any other, if I have problems and I just start sewing with it, I could break needles, I could damage my needle plate, I could cause lots of damage. So, and I don't want to have to fix anything else, I just went through the machine. So, I'm testing it right here. Okay, it feels great. It freaking feels great. So, um, the only thing that I don't know is what kind of stitch it's making right so i'm gonna bring this back up and i'm just gonna double check it i think it's making a good stitch okay and i'll cut this so i can get it up there so y'all can see it okay let's see let's see if i can zoom in on it kind of hard to see you can see it right here that stitch looks great that stitch looks great okay and then on this side if I can find it here we go and again it looks good it's hard to see it's right here the black it's looking good okay so um, all that looks good I'm gonna cut this excess off right here just like that here and here just making sure it's not in my way <coughs> okay and then here we go make one loop make sure Pedal. And <laughs> okay. 
Here we go. See what it's going to do. Start out slow. go raise that up cut that let's take a look all right on this thick material it's pulling up good it could use a little bit more tension but overall it's making a good stitch um, just because, let's see if I can show it to you. You know, it's got some areas like this where it'll make a decent stitch here. Let me get some more light here. Maybe. So it'll make a decent stitch and then it'll go in your thicker areas. See how in the thicker areas it's uh, not... It's still making a good stitch, but it's not pulling as hard just because this this little area here and this little area here, it's just thicker material. Um, so on, on this material, I could stand to turn it up to four, maybe even five. Um, but even if I don't, it's going to do fine. So either way, um, if I were sewing something for someone, just because I'm picky, I would. I would turn it up. I'd want a better stitch. Just testing on it like this, um, I'm not going to because I know usually whoever's sewing on it's not going to sew anything near the stick. Now, all right, I'm going to put it on a zigzag. So I've tested it on straight. That's the first thing I want to test. Next, I want to test zigzag. Okay, and so this is going to help me make sure that <clears throat> I don't have any problems on either side of the needle plate, on either side of the hook. And that um, I'm, I'm that my timing's good and I'm catching it. So I'm going to turn my stitch length down to just under two because I want a shorter stitch when I'm doing a zigzag. Now that's just what I prefer. When you're sewing, you gotta set that however you want it. But for for uh, for my purposes, I like to make it shorter. And I need to turn my stitch width. This has a, this machine has a automatic setting of about two and a half. I want to go five. I want to make sure that it looks good all the way across. And I don't think I'm sewing, I'm not. My thread came out. I think that's what happened, yeah. <laughs> my thread came out of my needle. I didn't have it long enough. I don't see it there, so I'm just going to pull it completely out and re-thread it. Okay, there we go. We'll try that again. Okay, 
Let's see what the what it looks like on back. All right, hey, it's making a great stitch. You can uh, let's see, see if I can get it over here, right here. You can see that stitch. It's making a great zigzag. The whole way. It done great the whole way. It didn't pull the upper stitch. It didn't do nothing. It done awesome. So, alright. So straight and zigzag look good. So for the most part, it uh, doesn't have any problems. Let's, uh, it sounds good. It doesn't sound like it did earlier when I, when I sewed on it. it sounded horrible. Alright, so let's, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to test out the uh, specialty stitches. I'll put it over here on, uh, make, oh. I'm going to test out the specialty stitches. Put it right here on this, uh, I don't know what it's called. It, uh, um. It's a crisscross type pattern, and I'm going to check that out. But this is a blue stitch. In order to get that blue stitch, I've got to turn my stitch length all the way to S1. Okay, so here we go. Okay, and I'm going to switch patterns, pull my needle up on this machine, I'm going to change it to this, this funky zigzag. And then one more time. <coughs> The zigzag with lines over the top of both both top and bottom. Okay, so let's start at the top where we started, and you can, I'll zoom in here, you can see that stitch right there, it's looking really good, Now I change patterns right here, that's looking good, and I change the patterns again right there, and that's looking really good, kind of hard to see the stitch in this fabric, but Overall, it's good. Let's look at the back. Okay. It's looking good. And then it changes right there. And then it changes again right there. So it's doing good. It's looking good. It sounds good. It's doing great. What questions do you have? Are you having problems with your uh, Singer Simple? Uh, let me know. Let me know what questions you have. Let me know how I can help you. Um, let me know if there's some some other issue that you're having. All right. All right. What questions do you have? Um, are you having other issues that you can't figure out? Are you having something that doesn't seem to make sense going on? Uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments. And if I can help you, I will. Um, if you're having a lot of problems, then join my group. Um, I'll have the I'll have it below. I'll have it the link to the group in uh, uh, down below. You can join the group, and I can help you in there better. Um, or you can find a link to the group on the header of my YouTube channel. Um, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Do me a favor: like and subscribe. Uh, to the channel, leave me a comment, and if you know somebody who's having problems with their machine, please share this with them, all right? Have a great day, and I will see you in the next video, and thank you so much.